So about a month ago, I was at a Starbucks picking up a coffee and on my way out, I saw for the first time in my life, someone with a dual screen laptop, like actually using it. And I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. He actually has one, he's actually gonna use it. So I was gonna leave, but I was like, I can't leave. I need to see how this whole thing plays out. So I got a table near him and I saw him set it up and I was like pretending to use my phone, but I was just creeping on the whole process. And it looked like he was looking at some like x-rays on the top screen and then some like other app on the bottom screen. And eventually I built up the courage to just be like, I, I need to know, right? I, so I went up to him like, tell me about this whole thing. And he had no idea who I was. He was just so excited and so enthusiastic to share this whole dual screen laptop experience with me. He went through the whole thing and I didn't have the heart to be like, yeah, I know all this stuff because I reviewed it. But it was really neat to see from the perspective of a user, all the neat things that he loved about it. But then at the end, I was like, that's cool and all, but what is it that you don't like about it? Like, what are the things that you dislike about this product and the whole experience? And he highlighted three things. A couple of them I actually talked about in my first video. So number one, he didn't like that you couldn't use that product. It was the yoga book, by the way, the two screen yoga book. You couldn't use it on your lap. Like he wanted to do this stuff in his car, but the whole experience on that device without a table is not great. So he would go into coffee shops and set everything up so he could do this stuff every morning. The second thing though, was that he thought that the performance, like, so he was showing me the x-rays, like he was looking at like the alignment of teeth. He was an orthodontist and the models, when you spun them around, would stutter a lot because the integrated GP on the thing wasn't great. But the other thing was that the product, he felt like didn't interact like a normal laptop. He had to carry it a certain way. He had to put it in like bags a certain way. He just wished it was shaped and looked like a normal laptop. And the whole time that he went through this, and I thanked him for his time, I had this device, I had this product, and I was like, I wish I could show him this thing. I couldn't because it was under NDA, but I, it was in my backpack in the car. But I was like, I could have shown him this thing that day. And I wish I did, I wish I'd broken the damn NDA because he would have freaking loved this thing. Now this product is the new Asus ZenBook Duo. And I think th this thing is so cool. I think that in the future, most laptops will be like this. I really think that because there's just so much utility that comes with this. So when you pop this thing open, it looks like a regular laptop, right? Like a regular single screen laptop. It's got a full size keyboard, full size trackpad, glass trackpad. And it's just like, a. it works like you would. Right, you, it looks like you would expect. And it's not super thick, right? Maybe not an ultra thin laptop, but when you pop it open, you discover that this thing has a second screen. Now, before I interact with this secondary screen, I wanna talk about what I think defines this product. It's actually this keyboard. So this keyboard, uh, it's a Bluetooth keyboard, and if you use it as a regular kind of wireless experience, it's a normal keyboard or normal wireless keyboard. It's got a good amount of travel. It's got a perfectly uh, responsive touchpad. But when you put it onto the bottom screen or the bottom area, this thing attaches with pogo pins. So there's a bunch of connectors on the bottom here. And then these interact with these little pins down here. And it's a magnetic system. You can kind of put it near it. It just snaps into place and then it becomes a wired keyboard experience. There's no lag or latency on this interact on this keyboard. It's like, it's, it's so good. Now, because there's magnets on the bottom of this thing and the bottom screen here, you can be very sloppy and I'll just slide in place. It's surprisingly good at just finding its correct position and just connecting. That one didn't go, but you gotta give it a little bit of a little push and it's good to go. Now you'll notice the screen is stuttering here and there and it's because as you remove the keyboard, it's switching from a dual screen product to a single screen product and the drivers need to obviously interact with that. But the other thing that makes this product really neat actually, you gotta see the hinge. Now, because this hinge has multiple positions, I think it can go from like 40 degrees to 60 degrees, you have a ridiculous amount of customizability with how you want to position everything. Now, the bottom of this product, you can see the hinge. This is a extraordinarily tanky hinge. It's all like it's metal. It's like, it's so solid and it's built right into the bottom of this device. Uh, I imagine that if you ever like cranked this thing and you broke it because it's got screw points here, you could just replace the hinge if you ever needed to. But just from the, it's just so solid. And because it's got these angles on it, these bevels on it, you can use it as two vertical screens and they'll auto rotate. 
Like if you're like a developer, oh my God, having two screens like this is so sick. Now, the thing that, okay, let's just start off from the top of why I love this. This product is not super expensive. I mean, the average kind of productivity focused device, I would say in the market, if you want a good one, is about a thousand to maybe 1200 bucks for something that's built like this. I think that's pretty fair, right? But this product is $14.99. It comes with a backpack and a sleeve for the laptop, as well as a pen for the device because it uses touch screen. So you can draw or paint on the screen if you're an artist or a digital illustrator. And because it's got a high refresh screen, there's very low latency between the pen input and what you're actually seeing on the display. And obviously it has like you know, pen input, so you can use it for handwriting, right? So it's got a lot of versatility like that. I think that for a product that is priced at $14.99, it's kind of weird to have this kind of versatility. It's it's so cool. Now, when I said earlier that I think in the future, more products will be like this, it stems from the fact that this experience of using the kind of regular laptop mode of single screen with a keyboard and trackpad, this is uncompromised on this product. Like it, it legitimately feels like a normal laptop and you obviously have that wonderful experience of the dual screen. Now, the double screen experience, I'm just gonna talk about this uh, from a personal perspective. When I pulled this thing out of the box, I was at home. So I set it up on my bed and this, is a vibe like to have the kickstand so you can just like comfortably and confidently set it up somewhere on your bed and just have your keyboard remotely and just be able to access like shows and be able to have something else on the bottom screen this is such an amazing experience and because you cannot replicate this kind of two two screen experience without a ton of other products and a ton of gear i think that this like anyone who uses this if you try this you just, you fall in love with it. You fall in love with the user experience of having two screens or just the option of having two screens without a compromised single screen experience. Like that is something that you just could not get with any other product before. And this can do it. It's so cool. Now, in terms of the actual performance, I was told specifically not to benchmark this laptop because it's too early on in the product cycle. None of the drivers are tuned yet, right? But I will say that because this is running Intel's Core Ultra chips. These have way better GPU performance and really solid CPU performance for the wattage than anything they've had before. This is a very smooth experience in Overwatch. Can't tell you the exact frame rate, but you can imagine, I mean, look at the screen, right? It's very smooth. All right, let's talk about the screens. So there's two screen configurations to choose from. This one here is a 3K OLED panel. So 2880 by 1800 on both the top panel and the bottom panel, and it's got 100% DCI-P3, up to 500 nits, and the OLED is just really nice to look at. But there's another cheaper version of this product that has a 1920 by 1200 screen. So it's like just low resolution, but it still has 500 nits and still has uh, the 100% DCI-P3. So I think on a product like that, because these are 14 inch screens, right? For someone that's seen a lot of 14 inch laptops, I feel like most people should opt for that lower resolution screen. The biggest thing is that you're driving two screens here, right? So there's just more pressure on the GPU to, to pump out so many pixels when you have the higher resolution screen. It is available as an option for people that are, you know, if they're working with, you know, detailed photos and video and you need that resolution, go for it. But if you are interested in this product, I would push more people to that lower resolution screen because of the dual screen nature. Also, Asus has a bunch of tools that they've built specifically for a double screen device like this. So the one thing I thought was neat was you can adjust the brightness of the screens independently. So this is like super useful. You can have like a really bright top screen and really dark bottom screen or vice versa. And oh man, if it goes completely dark, are you blind? <laughs> you are. Wait, 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 wait. Can you adjust? Yeah, 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 you can use the keyboard still. <laughs> Thank God, okay. But you can adjust it uh, to your heart's content. And it's just like, if you have apps that have like different brightness that you would want, but also when you have screens that are on an angle, you just often, because of the way light transmission works, you often want them on different brightness if you can. Um, but the other thing that I thought was neat is they have a tool that allows you to mirror the screen so that let's say you and I are at a table and I was on a regular laptop in order for me to show what's on my screen, I have to kind of put it in the middle so we can both see it. But on a double screen, you can mirror your screen and it's inverted for the other person. So you could be on that side looking at the same thing that I'm doing. And as I interact on my screen, it's just mirrored in the proper orientation on your side. So if you're like in a meeting or something, it's kind of neat. Um, there's just small tools that they've added to this device that I think just make it 
extra useful. Now, obviously, if you ever wanna connect up the keyboard to this device, you would just place it on and then now it switches over to single screen laptop mode. But if you are, for whatever reason, in a pinch and you don't have access to that uh, Bluetooth keyboard, you have the ability to turn on a, if you just give me a second, a on-screen keyboard that's actually quite similar to the one that was on the, uh, uh, the Lenovo Yoga. I don't love typing on these things, but you can. Like, it's it's usable. Like, if you wanna just see what this is like, it's not great. But this is just the nature of any kind of on-screen keyboard compared to an actual physical keyboard. Uh, now, another thing that I thought was interesting, they've designed it so that if you ever have a circumstance where, I'm just gonna like show you the side of the product to be able to kind of see what's going on here. So if you're ever in a situation where you don't have the keyboard stuck into the device, there is a gap, right? Because that's just the nature of having the keyboard missing. But they've put these like rubber strips there so that if the screen does get squashed, it doesn't just slam into the panel. There's like a, you can't. You can only squash it so far before it hits the rubber and then like, it won't break the device. I'm assuming with enough pressure, <laughs> you'll bust it, but under normal use, it won't break. Uh, but once you have the keyboard installed or placed on, now it's like a normal device. So in terms of the ports, there's one USB-A and then two USB-C. There is a third USB-C down here, but this is not connected to the system. This is just to charge the wireless keyboard. So if you ever need to in a pinch, separate from the device itself, you can. And there's also HDMI and uh, audio jack, but I think on a device like this, I'm not expecting any more ports. I feel like this has a good selection of ports considering all the things that are going on. And in terms of the thermals and the fan noise, again, I, I wasn't allowed to benchmark this thing, but I will say that my initial impressions are that they're more than sufficient. The chips are more energy efficient and they have a pretty decent thermal system going on there. You heard this thing when I was playing Overwatch, right? That's as loud as it gets, so. I'm happy with it. Uh, now, earlier I said that I feel like a device like this is the future of computing and I really feel like that because if you have, like anyone who had the option of like, hey, do you wanna take the device that you have right now, make it, let's say three millimeters thicker and then give it a secondary screen, wouldn't you want that? And without jacking up the price too much, for this kind of money, $14.99, you get this type of performance, you get the two OLED screens, like it's just, it's really solid. I'm surprised actually that they priced it like this to be completely honest. But there you have it, this is the ZenBook Duo and yeah, I think this is, it's a vibe, man. This thing is so cool, so cool. All right, 